Hi, we're gonna talk to you about the polar desert. Polar deserts are areas in which the annual precipitation is around 15 centimeters, and the mean temperature during the warmest months is often lower than 10 degrees. These deserts are situated on the polar regions of the northern and southern hemispheres. The polar desert is mainly on the higher and on the lower part of the world. It is in the North Pole, in the South Pole, in Northern Asia, in Northern America, and a little bit in Northern Europe. The polar desert is in Western South America and in Central Asia too. This is because these places are the coldest and the driest places of the world and the sun doesn't heat up all these places. The polar desert is very cold, windy, and it has low precipitations, most of them solid. Temperatures in the polar desert in summer are between 1 and 10 degrees. On the contrary, in winter, temperatures are around minus 70 degrees. Soiling here is infertile and with a lot of salinity. Sometimes the soil is frozen and other times is melted. The temperature, the rain and the type of soil are some of the reactive factors that influence the polar desert. The temperature is very cold and long winter with snow and rain during the summer and winter. Temperature can be higher than 4 degrees. The rain, the most of the rain in spring and snows throughout all the year. The type of soil, the most is covered by sand dunes. It's heavy, salty and frozen. The most important limiting factor in the polar desert are the extremely high temperatures. Because of the global warming, the temperature is increasing. This is a very serious problem that affects the, this type of ecosystem. These are some living things of this ecosystem. Plants. These are the producers. And some examples are Antarctic grass, moss, lichen, Arctic carnation, Antarctic pearwort, snow algae, and liverworts. These are the animals. Animals are consumer. Some, some examples are reindeer, polar bear, Arctic fox, narval, walrus, seal, ox, moose, orca, puffin, wolverine, hermine, Arctic hare, lamprey, and snowy owl. The fungus are the decomposers, and some examples are slime molds and mycelium. As you can see, these are some food chains. I'm going to explain you two of them. The first one is grasses, picas, and brown bears. And the other one is lichens, lemmings, arctic foxes, and polar bears. This is a food network of the polar desert. Example is lichen, arctic hares, and snowy owls. Relationships. The first one, competition relationship. It is an intraspecific relationship. Uh, it is negative for both of the animals. Competition is a relationship between organisms in which one is harmed when both are trying to use the same resource related to growth and reproduction. An example is snowy owls and lemmings. And another one, bears and hares. The second relationship is the cooperation relationship. It's an interspecific relationship and it's positive for both of these species. Many animal species cooperate with each other in mutual symbiosis. It is used for protection or in the search for food. One example is the Ocellaris clownfish, which wheels among the tentacles of richery sea anemones. The animals provide the clownfish with, with protection from their predators, which cannot tolerate the stings of the sea animals' tentacles, while the fish defend the animals against butterfly fish, which eat animals. Example, animals that live in groups, penguins. Predation. It is an interspecific relationship. It is positive for one species and negative for the other one. A member of one species predator eats all or part of the body of a member of another species. Prey. Examples. Orca sitting a seal. Parasitism is an interspecific relationship. It is positive for one of the species and negative for the other one. A long-term close association between two species in which one benefits and the other one is harmed. Example. Liver tapeworm seized on polar bears. Mutualism. It is an interspecific relationship and is positive for both of the species. A long-term close association between two species in which both partners benefit. They can live without the others. Example, lichens, fungi and algae.